Hi there, I'm Heidi Swap. Welcome back to Create to Remember. And today we're gonna get our fingers a little bit dirty. Are you ready? Okay, I am back with more um, wood albums, kind of mixed media approach. And I have been having some fun with stencils. So stencils are very hot right now and they're really easy to find. And if you don't have some stencils and you have a Silhouette or a Cricut or one of those cutting machines, you could always cut yourself some shapes to play around with it um, out of cardstock or whatever. Um, and you can, you can often find, t find things that aren't meant to be stencils as stencils. So be a little bit creative in terms of what you use. But I wanna show you a really interesting technique that will utilize your stencils and your wood and some color shine. So, let me just first show you some examples. Now, I'm gonna start with this album, and you can see that when I have sprayed onto this wood album, I've used mustard color shine, and you can still kind of see the wood grain through the shine, but you can see that it's extremely smooth. It goes on very, very smooth, and this is what it looks like when you spray directly onto the wood. And you'll be amazed, if you haven't tried it, you'll be amazed at how gorgeous and how vibrant the color is. All right, now let me show you this exact same album. And this is where this album is so versatile and so cool because you can do such a different look. Now, if you take a look, and, and I can show you, if you could zoom in right here, you can see that there is actually a pattern in there behind on the surface of this album. And that pattern is, I've used a stencil to get the pattern in there before I put all the junk on the top, right? So I want to show you just one more example, and I and hopefully, I'm, I mean, I have so many things that I'd love to show you, so hopefully we'll get to it. But I've also used stencils to create these butterflies in the background, and I want to show you how to do that. Now, the tricky thing that you have with the wood is that it's extremely porous, and so the color shine will just seep right on in everywhere that it's sprayed. And so what I, have, what I have tried playing around with is creating a resist on the wood using an adhesive, all right? So that means that I'm going to actually paint adhesive onto my stencil and then let it dry on the surface of my wood and then we'll spray over that and it will create a barrier so that the color shine doesn't seep into the wood where the adhesive is. Now I'm using the US Art Quest Duo adhesive. Um, I think that Mod Podge would also be a great solution for this type of an approach. Now oftentimes when I have made kind of a resist for on paper for color shine, I have used like embossing powders and um, stamped my image and then use the heat tool to set the embossing powder and then that will create a really interesting look um, and, and resist on the surface of paper. Um, and it will actually also work right onto the wood, but not as well. The wood needs a little bit more uh, of a barrier. And the other thing that I like about this is that it's just one step. So one step is better than two steps, right? So this is what I'm doing. I'm going to, I'm just kind of um, dabbing it on so that if, because if I was brushing, it would kind of um, tend to move around, kind of maybe seep underneath my stencil. So you can kind of see, because I have a nice dirty stencil, <laughs> you can kind of see where the glue has gone on. And actually, that doesn't bother me at all. Now, if you want to take a minute, while that's drying, you can clean your stencil. Um, usually I kind of just set it aside and let it dry and then just add right onto the top. But once you get really gunky stencils, then, then they stop being really effective. So I'm just using a little bit of Windex and I'm going to clean off as much as I can. All right, now we want to make sure that this is really dry. And so it's a good idea to use the heat tool on there. And you're going to want to make sure that it's dry to the touch. So before you start spraying and adding color onto this wood, we're going to really want to make sure that it's dry and sitting right on top. Now 
Now what will happen as it starts to dry is it will kind of start to disappear. It will start to be harder to see. But that resist area will stay there even when it's dry. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is just choose a couple of colors of color shine. Whatever's going to work great for your project. I'm going to use some Tropicana teal and maybe even some tinsel. That's kind of a gray color. And one of the colors that I really love because it has so much gold in there is the bronzer. You can see that I'm kind of blending it and it doesn't, you don't need to think a whole lot. <laughs> it always just looks awesome. Um, so immediately you're being able to see where those resist areas are because the color shine is not going down into the wood. So I like to let it sit for a few seconds to really let the color shine seep into the wood before I'm gonna, I am gonna have to pick it off or dab it off with a paper towel. Um, because it won't, obviously it won't sip, seep into that resist area. So I'll take a paper towel and because I have several colors and I don't want to muddy them all up, I kind of like how they have um, naturally blended. What I'll do is put a paper towel over the top and just brush it with my hands to pick up any excess um, color shine. And then if I wanted to, I could blend it just a little bit but look at how beautiful that resist shows up. That was with just one step of that adhesive. And because it's dry, and because that duo adhesive dries really flat, um, you don't even have a gloss. This does come with a gloss or a matte, so you could do either way. Now, as you might be imagining, you could stamp first and then add the adhesive. You could add a layer of color shine first and then add the adhesive resist and then more color shine on top. The sky is the limit with this technique. So I want to show you one other option and I need to quickly clean up my surface so that it doesn't carry onto my next project. But that's one of the great things about the color shine is that it cleans up really easily with Windex. In fact, when you have it on your hands and you're going to start a new project, you can just add a little bit of Windex to your hands and your hands will clean right off. All right, so that's a good thing to know and to share with your friends. <laughs> okay, so in this case, even though you can't see anything yet, I have gone ahead and done the adhesive resist with a butterfly stencil. I have a little butterfly stencil here. And even though these butterflies are kind of haphazardly um, laid out, I, you're able to add the, add the glue and then move it, add the glue and then move it, um, and be very selective where you put those butterflies. All right, so now I'm adding the mustard color shine. And of course, it's always fun to add multiple colors. There's some Georgia peach on there. And you know, I, it's hard for me to resist putting some gold over the top. <laughs> All right, so again, as you let those colors sit, then you can pick it all back up. But what I wanted to show you is once you have already done the color resist, or the, the glue resist, and you can see these butterflies starting to appear, and they're very soft and subtle, which is fun. Now I can go back with my stencil and I can take maybe just a little bit of acrylic paint and I can go in and I can make them, you know, even just that much more defined. Let's see. Then the trickiest part here is that you have to remember <laughs> which butterfly shape you used. All right. And then you can even take it one step further. And I'm just going to dry it a little bit. I mean, the layering possibilities on here 
is endless. But once I get this mostly dry, and when I'm home crafting, especially when you're layering with wet layers, you want to make sure that you let things really dry before you move on. But because you're watching, I'm trying to be quick and get all of these ideas out there to you. Now I'm going to take a stamp. And I've got my stamp here on my acrylic block. And I'm going to go back to my same stencil. Lay that down in position. And, and I'm just going to use a portion of this stamp. And then I can go ahead and do just a little bit of stamping right over that little butterfly area that I've added a little bit of acrylic paint. It's a resist and stamp. And so I want to just show you on this particular album that I first did the little resist butterflies. I added a little bit of acrylic stamping, I mean a little bit of acrylic paint, a little bit of stamping, and then I went back and was able to add more stamping in the background. So the fun thing about this technique and these wood surfaces is that the possibilities for what you can do is just boundless. It's, it's so much fun to play with the color, play with the layers, play with the stencils, play with the backgrounds, and, and make pretty stuff.